Throw on to Diani, who slams it home. Right at the right from the left block, layup good. Parker drives it through the hole to the right. Foot comes around to score, the Cavs win. Pierman dives into the end zone, touchdown Cavaliers. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. He's one of those guys that wants you to know he's there. He wants you to remember who he is. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. I'm Byron Glassby, number 22 on our football team. We've got stories to tell and highlights to show on today's program, and we'll start with our Play of the Week. The Play of the Week is brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. We make the American dream come true every day. We're going to see Randolph kicking. Well, that's interesting. See- All the credit for that goes to, uh, to Bob Diaco and his idea, and Scott Bakey and John Phillips for the execution, and uh, clearly got us a, a touchdown there that It's a lot more valuable to us than having kicked the field goal. It's going to be Robert Randall. And they're going to fake it. Here's Dakey throwing to the end zone. He is Phillips. Touchdown, Virginia. A little trickery as the Cavaliers catch ECU completely off guard. Stay tuned. Virginia game highlights are coming up next. Here we go. Cedric Pyramid across the 30 to the 20. 10. Welcome back to the show. Our football team faced a tough opponent in East Carolina on Saturday. Let's check out the game story. The Cavalier game highlights are presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Pierman lines up to the left of Verica in the backfield. He's going to take the handoff on second down, and Cedric Pierman with another good hard run going around the right side. He's got a running back to either side now as he takes the snap, drops back to throw, throws this one to Jackson in the flat. Jackson dropped it. It was popped into the air and intercepted. But today, one for one. He'll take the snap, going to keep it himself. He's going to run into trouble as he leans across the 29 to the 28, right at the 35. Here's the snap. Hold is down. Kick is up. It's on the way. This one looks like it's got the distance, and it is good. The defense overall uh, fought it out in some tough circumstances, kept us in the game, uh, clearly kept us in the game in the first quarter when the game could have fallen apart on those turnovers, and that's how a team works. Just to the right side of the line, now Pinkney rolling out to his right, has no one to go to, now throws the opposite side, gets it to Harris, and Harris is going to be wrapped up at the 18-yard line. Man in motion as Phillips going to the right side, the hand off to Pierman, Pierman tries to get around that right corner, he breaks the tackle across the 25 and the 30, he's rumbling down the sideline look out goodbye Cedric Pierman takes it all the way touchdown Virginia it was just a great job by the guys up front um they opened up the holes and I was uh, fortunately I thank God I was, able, I was able to find it UVA 100 yards rushing to 64 for East Carolina now bootlegging and throwing to the right his pass going to be incomplete as it was knocked down by Matt Conrad Handoff will go to Pierman. Pierman around the left side. He's got an opening again. Here we go. Cedric Pierman across the 30 to the 20. 10, 5, touchdown, Virginia. Cedric uh, obviously clearly stood out on those plays. Uh, great effort plays. Showed what kind of speed he's got at the same time. Ced is the heart of the team. You know, he makes everything go. Um, you know, we had a tough first quarter there. Turned the ball over twice there, but... You know, we were able to come back and put a lead on like we did just because of him. A running back set to each side as well. Takes the snap. Here comes the blitz for the Pirates. Throws over to the far sideline. Ball is caught there by Ogletree. Here's a play action pass. Verica throws to the near side. He's got a man again. This one's brought in by Covington on the near sideline. 
Erica takes the snap, another play action pass. Here comes the pressure up the middle, throws over the middle. The ball is caught by Phillips. He's cut down at the five yard line, but another nice gainer of 14 yards. Now, Erica goes out of the shotgun. He's got a running back to each side. He'll hand out to Simpson. Simpson tries the right side, finds the opening, dances through the fenders and takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia. Two receivers set to the left, takes the snap. Play action pass, going to roll to his opposite side. Here comes the pressure, and he's sacked by Antonio Appleby at the six-yard line. Virginia's rolling. Sets up first and ten. Verica drops back to throw. He's going to heave this one. Got a man down the middle. It's to Ogletree, and he makes the catch. Touchdown, Virginia. This offense is flying high. ECU returns on the return. That's going to be Dwayne Harris taking it from his own end zone. Breaks a tackle across the 20 to 25. Still on his feet at the 30. Look out. Here we go. He's across the 50-yard line. Just wrapped up in Virginia territory. Virginia stacks the line of scrimmage. It's going to be another option. Pinkney going to pitch it out. He's got Williams all by himself. He walks into the end zone. Touchdown, ECU. Showing blitz sends him. On the right side of the line, here's a fake handoff. They pass it off to Harris. Harris looked like he was playing well, but he breaks the tackle. He's got Green in front of him. Shakes the tackle for Mosley across the 50. He's down the near sideline of the 31-yard line. Takes the snap. Third down and goal. Holds on to it. He's scrambling in traffic. Stays alive on his feet. Going to throw it to the end zone. It's going to be a touchdown. And now Pinkney going out of the shotgun. Two receivers left, one to the right. He'll fake the handoff. Hanging on. Matt Conrad spins him to the ground. The ball is loose. Virginia pounces on it. Matt did a real nice job on it. And, you know, his growth, uh, we talk about the growth of the offensive line, but uh, with two freshmen there at nose tackle and right defensive end, there's a lot of growth available at that position too. And uh, clearly those kids are uh, a little bit different than they were six weeks ago. On first down, 15 yards to go. Play action pass. Verica looking downfield. Fires over the middle. Got a man. Covington makes the catch of the 10-yard line. And they're going to fake it. Here's Dakey throwing to the end zone. He oh, loves yes. Phillips. Touchdown, Virginia. We've been working on that for a while. Um, we tried to run it, I think, last week, and it didn't work out for us. But um, put it back in this week, and um, luckily we got in there, and uh, we got a touchdown out of it. No progression on that play. Um, just if he's open, it just so happens, you know, you try and fool the defense, and it just was uncovered. So we get a quick snap, and we're able to steal some points and help the team win. So pretty excited about it. Virginia has a great linebacker tradition, and one of the best we've seen in recent years is current co-captain Clint Centum. Number 51 is pretty laid back off the field, but on the field, he's a fierce competitor. Clint Centum is your Student Athlete of the Week. The Student Athlete of the Week is brought to you by the Cavalier Team Shop Online, where every purchase benefits the UVA Athletics Academic Affairs Office. He's one of those guys that once you know he's there, he wants you to remember who he is. He's very strong at the point of attack, and he likes to use his hands well, and um, you know, he understands the game, and he brings it back into it. I grew up in Northern Virginia, uh, about 20 minutes outside of D.C. Both my parents originally came from Ghana. So me and my brother and my sister are the first generation. Um, my childhood was somewhat normal, I guess. I mean, growing up, me and my brother have always been close. Um, I think by the time ninth grade came around, my father remarried, and I, and I was blessed with the fortune to have three new sisters. So three stepsisters, we all grew up together. We all, we all hang out, play around, joke. And I love them all to death, so. Came to college, taking, taking football was going to be the same as high school. Um, bigger, stronger, faster than everybody, and, and able to dominate the game. Obviously, that didn't happen. I can remember my first impression of Clint. I didn't like him. I thought he was lazy. I thought he was overrated. Uh, I thought he was overweight. <laughs> I, thought, I thought a lot of things. Uh, but the last two years, especially, I mean, he's really just become dedicated in, in, in watching film uh, in, in our off-season workouts, especially. I learned real quickly when. Uh, some of the bigger guys came and kind of hit me in my place. So initially I had sloppy feet, probably the sloppiest 
in the world. And some of the guys on the team still tell you have sloppy feet. But uh, just um, playing out on the receivers, playing out in the slot, um, being able to move with guys who are, who are 10 times faster than me and more athletic than I am. I was one of the hardest transitions. It was, it was a huge transition. I think that was my biggest downfall early in my career. He was the number one uh, linebacker in the nation in the sack last year, and this year he's already got five and a half or something like that. So obviously rushing the passer, he does a really good job with. Um, but they're letting him drop down, drop in coverage, and you know, cover the flash now. And um, you know, he works on that hard with his hips and stuff. Personally, I don't really get to see him that much because of the routes that I run. But um, you know, he's dropping back, and I, I see that he's doing well when I, when I watch film on uh, Sunday. There's just been a lot of guys, a long tradition of guys that just play linebacker. And you know, Coach Grove being a, a linebacker guru, I guess, he really, he really loves his linebackers and appreciates them. So just knowing that there's a long legacy of guys like that to, to look up to and, and watch film, you just try to follow in that tradition and continue that up. He gets on the field, and he has a purpose about it, and he has a passion for the game. He wants his opponents to remember who he is. He wants people to remember who he is when they get done playing with him. That's his personality. And he gives out there and improves it every day. Chris has been one of my best friends for quite some time now. Um, we were fortunate to live together um, for about three years now. And uh, I learned a lot from him, just as far as the way, the way he approached the game, mainly so his uh, last two years here. He really approached the game like a business. And uh, he came in to work every day. He worked hard, and, and he did everything people asked him to do. So, when he left, it was, it was just kind of like a light switch for me. Like, hey, like I, I want to be that guy. I want to be. I don't want to be Chris Long, but I want to. I want to model myself after his work ethic. I want to accomplish some of the things that he's accomplished. Out of the shotgun or the nickel package, it's going to be Turner. Here comes the pressure from the near side. Flint sets it. I was very excited when we did the L. Actually, um, you know, Chris is there, and uh, Chris actually was wearing his jersey when he raised the flag. And, uh, you know, Clint went in there and got a sack and, you know, threw the L back. You know, them two are really close. They've always been really close. I'm still learning. Um, just getting better every day and, and, and trying, to, uh, trying to be the best football player I can be. Visit the Cavalier Team Shop online at virginiasports.com and take advantage of this week's special offer. On this week's Cavalier Flashback, we travel to Cary, North Carolina for the 2004 Women's ACC Soccer Championship. Cavalier Flashback is brought to you by the Virginia Lottery. More than $3 billion to K-12 public education since 1999. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. Entering the 2004 ACC Championship, the Virginia Cavalier women's soccer team was ranked number four in the country, but it was the number one ranked North Carolina Tar Heels who were the heavy favorites to win the championship. Virginia got off to a fast start in the quarterfinals as they bombarded Virginia Tech in an 8-0 round. Kelly Hammond, Kristen Weiss, and Lindsey Gussick each scored two goals in what was the most lopsided Cavalier victory over any opponent in 10 years. Virginia faced a tougher test against number 22 Clemson in the semifinals. Down 1-0 at the half and still trailing 15 minutes into the second stanza, Gussick's blast tied the game and just three and a half minutes later, Hammond connected with the game winner. In the championship match, Virginia scored first when tournament co-MVP Sarah Huffman drew the defense in and delivered a nifty pass to Gussick. Carolina tied the game early in the second half and then thwarted a number of Virginia chances throughout the remainder of regulation. After two scoreless overtime periods, the championship fell to penalty kicks. The teams traded tallies until the sixth round when Virginia's other tournament co-MVP, Christina DeVries, shut the door on the Tar Heels and sealed Virginia's first ACC championship in women's soccer. Coming up after the break. Welcome back to Cavalier Sports Weekly. Our men's soccer team had a pair of home games this week, hosting Liberty on Tuesday and Clemson on Friday. We've got those highlights and more on this week's Olympic Sports Spotlight. The Olympic Sports Spotlight is presented by the Virginia Athletics Foundation.
think we were economical is the best way I can describe that game. We, we did ourselves a favor by scoring three quick goals and, and took the air out of the game and took the intensity out of the game um, and were able to play. We started four different guys, got just about our whole roster on the field, and it, it, it worked out perfectly. We got guys running who needed run. We got guys out who needed a break, and uh, now we're turning our attention to Clemson. I think they made it tough for us, you know. Um, probably a little bit tougher than I than we all thought, you know. They, they um, you know, they're a team that's trying to get to 500. They're, they're, they're still have some hope to make the playoffs, and, and this would have been a big win for them. And they've been on a roll, so they, they came in here fighting, you know. And uh, they played very direct. Uh, they got enough athleticism on the field to make it tough for you, and we didn't deal with it very well in the first half. Second half, we did. I don't think this first half was particularly good for us, but I thought the second half they did what I asked them to do, which was, you know, make smart plays, keep the ball, possess the ball a little bit more. And, and I, you know, I felt like whether it was regulation or overtime that we're going to get a goal eventually. scrumble in there but you know everybody kind of pushed together and as soon as the ball squared out I was just able to swing through it and push it through. Well, a guy in the 89th minute who's not fresh probably doesn't get on the end of that and so you know last week he got he, he caused a penalty kick for us so he's coming in and doing some good things. Now I think we can catch our breath a little bit I'm giving these guys two days off we don't play till next Friday um, deserve it two days off and uh, we'll regroup and get ready for BC. We just got this unshakable belief in our team. And I don't think anyone on this, on this team doubted that we would pull this one out tonight. That was a huge win for our men's soccer team. And now let's check in with Cedric Pierman in this week's segment of Profiles in Leadership. Profiles in Leadership with Cedric Pierman, recognizing outstanding individuals in the Cavalier athletics community. Welcome to Profiles in Leadership. This week we take a look at one of my favorite programs here at UVA, the ACE program. ACE was started in 2006 by our own academic coordinator, Natalie Fitzgerald. The program presents Virginia student athletes with the opportunity to tutor young people in the Charlottesville community. We spoke with Mrs. Fitz about the origins and evolution of the ACE program. ACE actually started because Pat Slabonic and Tom Santee were in a personal development class that is taught by Phil Gates, which required a community service component. And when they discovered that I had been a public school teacher, they requested that I help them develop a program that could get them into the local schools. So we got a committee together, which consisted of myself and Chris Long and Scott Dakey, John Phillips, Pat Slabonic and Tom Santee, and we kind of brainstormed what we would like to do. Um, we did not want it to be a PR stunt. We did not want it to be just an athlete showing up. Here I am, I'm a student athlete. We wanted it to be an impact, a program that would impact in some way. Okay, 1997. So we came up with ACE. ACE stands for Athletes Committed to Community and Education, and actually developed around a Jackie Robertson quote which is, a life is not important except for its impact on other lives. And that's the quote that we build our program around. And we sat down and found a school, Buford Middle School, who were willing to open up their doors and let us come in and test them out. We started with 12 athletes total for the first semester. 
and they had such a good experience that we thought, okay, this might work. And now we actually have over 90 athletes going to four different schools. And they go twice a month. And we put in a lot of hours for visitation and a, and a lot of work. Just taking a small part of your day to go up there and, and help some of these kids out and, and play with them and, and help them read, just little things out of your day. And it, re it really makes a difference to them. Probably 80% of the athletes that currently do ACE have been doing ACE for more than two or three semesters, and they just keep on going. So the majority of the athletes involved have been committed to this program for a year or more. Good job, Dad. The teachers are very appreciative. They love having the one-on-one -on -one interaction with athletes. And I think, in general, the program has been a huge success. Thanks for watching Cavalier Sports Weekly. We've got a huge home game next week as the North Carolina Tar Heels visit Scott Stadium. We'll cover that game and check in with head coach Dave Leto as our men's basketball team has its opening week of practice. I'm Byron Glassby, and until next time, go Hoos! Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.